Hey guys, um, doing another turbocharger thing. Um, on this one, we're gonna talk about axial play and radio play. So axial is um, axial play is gonna be in and out on the turbocharger. So um, in this case, up and down, but in and out. And then radio play is actually like this, but up and down basically. So I wanted to talk, and then we'll talk a little bit about what happens to a turbocharger when they get screwed up. I don't have any screwed up ones to show you, um, but th give you an idea. So let's just get this thing mounted up here and we'll get on with the show. This out of the way, that was from the last video. All right. So when you're measuring axial play, the easiest way to do it for the most part if the tr if at the end if it's in the truck um, or car or whatever because this this doesn't oppose just to a, to a diesel any turbocharger um, basically if you can you can grab this nut somehow and just lift straight up and down on it or a in and out right you know the old in and out motion so if you can pull that in and out at all there's something wrong because you shouldn't be able to even feel a click if you can feel a click now I shouldn't say that. If you have a, if it's a big turbocharger, um, you will get a thou, thou and a half um, clearance in there. So, and even sometimes, I shouldn't say that, even bigger turbochargers might be more. But for the most part, you won't feel a click. You know, if you feel a click, there's something wrong. Now, talking about radio play, and you can see that, I don't know if how easy you guys will be able to see that in the video, but... You can see that moving back and forth, and that is more than fine. Because you gotta remember that when you put, these are the wrong bearings for this, but you put the bearing here, and we're wiggling out here, right? This bearing's way in here, and it has no support on that much, and you're wiggling, so you're gonna, you're, you're gonna move it around a little bit. But it's basically the easiest way to tell is if, as long as you don't have any impact marks on your housing, your compressor housing. Rule of thumb. There is actually, you can measure it with a feeler gauge. I don't really like measuring the feeler gauges, but as long as you don't have impact on your compressor housing, this one's just dirty, but it's there's no impact on it, then you're usually okay. And also the same idea, if you pull the compressor housing off, you'll be able to see if the compressor wheel has touched because it'll be shiny. Um, like shiny from it touching So if you don't have any of those symptoms Then I would say the turbocharger is good as long as it's not leaking oil um, now That being said, this is how you check that now <clears throat> if you are having problems um, <clears throat> Just to show you What were what you got here now this kit I honestly don't even know where this kit came from I must have got it from somewhere, but obviously this is a 270 thrust bearing it's not a 360 thrust bearing which i prefer the 360 thrust bearing but this is just what i happen to have so the 360 thrust bearing just goes all the way around and then this is in two pieces so but basically this is the thrust so it's fed oil through those holes and that's what keeps this from melting down but if you look there like that's how much play there is. Like basically nothing. Like you can't even, you can't even feel it in this, because basically what it does is there, the the hydraulic wedge or oil film is what this is supposed to ride on. It's not supposed to ride on either of these surfaces. It actually sits on top of the oil. It sits on the oil film or hydraulic wedge. Some people call it. Just depending. There's a, there's a few names for it. Just depending, um, and there might be a, a specific for this type of application what they call it um, but i'm not a rocket scientist so i don't know all the, i don't know all that stuff anyways um so that's that and then same with these bushings these bushings um you know it does the exact same thing it's just a journal bearing it's like your engine it's like the it's like your your main bearing in your engine just in one piece so you put that on there and obviously this is not the right one but that would be like absolutely no good so um, what else did I want to talk about on this one? I get oil leaks and problems, um, on the next video. So anyways, 
Um, keep this this one short, uh, sweet and short, I guess. Um, I can't think of anything else that I wanted to talk about that as far as that goes. And it'd be the same idea, I guess, on your compressor side if you're having an issue, or not compressor side, sorry, uh, turbine side or turbine side, depending on how you guys say it. We call it turbine, but anyways, however you pronounce it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Basically the same idea. Usually the compressor wheel is going to have a faster failure um, if your bearings are starting to go. One is because there's a tighter tolerance and two, this has a bearing this close and the compressor wheel, the bearing is considerably farther out, right? So like from this tip, I should say. So anyways, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments and remember, it's not rocket science.